Okay, so for our, our last type of mole ratio problem, we've done empirical, we've done molecular, we have an understanding of the mole ratio inside of a formula. Well, uh, the next part of that that we're going to learn is called hydrates. Uh, and hydrates are solids. Now, we think hydrate water, maybe we think it's a gel-like substance or a liquid, but it's not. These two pictures right here uh, show hydrates. They're solids. Uh, they're crystalline solids. Um, and what they are is uh, hydrates are compounds with water molecules trapped within that crystal structure. So they feel solid, they look solid, um, and yet they have water trapped inside uh, of that crystal structure. Now the water is weakly bonded, and that's demonstrated by this dot in the formula right here. So an example, uh, this blue one over here is uh, CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. So that's how you recognize it as a hydrate. It is a compound and water in a mole ratio. Now this particular one would be a 1 to 5 mole ratio. So for every 1 mole of copper sulfate, copper 2 sulfate, cupric, uh, you get 5 moles of water. So a 1 to 5 uh, mole ratio. Another example, so you can have another one, and my little stars here is the way it worked out when I typed these things in, but that would represent the dot, so Li2SO4, lithium sulfate, dot 2H2Ls. That means you have two moles of water for every one mole of lithium sulfate, a 1 to 2 mole ratio, a 1 to 7 mole ratio, magnesium carbonate, dot 7 H2Os. Now the way you name these things uh, is you name this first part, so copper 2 sulfate or cupric sulfate, and then you say cupric sulfate pentahydrate. So pentahydrate to show the five. Those prefixes we use are the same ones we use to name molecules uh, back in the nomenclature chapter. Lithium sulfate dihydrate. Lithium sulfate dihydrate. Magnesium carbonate heptahydrate. Magnesium sulfite hexahydrate. So a 1 to 6 ratio on this particular one. Uh, if you've noticed so far, it's going to be a 1 to something ratio of water. So 1 to 2, 1 to 1, 1 to 5, 1 to 7, uh, whatever it is, uh, you're always going to have a 1 to a whole number ratio of water molecules in the hydrate. So here's an example. Uh, we have 0 0.391 grams of Li2SIF6, lithium hexafluorosilicate, polyatomic ion, uh, 0 0.0903 grams of water. So what we're trying to find out is what is the hydrate? Well, we've already learned the skills, and we've been practicing the skills to get mole ratios. So to get a mole ratio, uh, the first thing we need then, obviously, is moles. All right, so the difference between this and a hydrate, or an empirical formula, is when I divide these two by their molar masses to get moles, I can't just look at the periodic table and do elements, because I have, uh, in this first one, two lithiums, one silicon, um, and seven, or six uh, fluorines. So I have two times... The mass of lithium, 6.94, 13.88. Uh, one silicon, 28, so 28. And then 6 times uh, 19 for fluorine, 6054, 114. I didn't line that up very good. Um, 12, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 155.8 is the molar mass of uh, lithium hexafluorosilicate. So let me get rid of that so I have some room here. So 155, let's say 0.9. Uh, water, 18. You could carry it out to 18.02, but we know oxygen 16, hydrogen's 1, or 1.01, uh, and then times 2 because we have two of them. All right, so from there, that will give us moles. So uh, step one is get moles. Um, I have... My calculator here, so we have 0.391 divided by 155.9, uh, and we get 0 0.00251. Kept three significant digits. I could even go 2508 to do like we do in empirical formulas and keep an extra one. Uh, water, I have, my calculator just shrunk there. I don't know what happened. Uh, 0 0.0903 divided by 18, I get... 0.005016. All right, so I now have uh, moles of each. 
So now I need to find a ratio. So the second step in doing a hydrate problem is get, a, get the ratio of the moles. Well, we know how to do that too. Again, not a new skill. I know I need to divide these by the smaller one. That's going to be the smaller one, and that's going to be a 1. Um, and then 0 0.005016 divided by 0 0.002508, and it comes out to be a 2.0000. All right, now at this point, this is the evaluation point, just like we did uh, when we did empirical formulas. In empirical formulas, that either ended up a whole number ratio or one of the decimal equivalents. Well, this time around, it's going to be a whole number. It's going to be. If it's not, something's wrong along the way. Uh, so that's your evaluation this time. It is going to be a whole number of water molecules. All right, so the answer is Li2, SO, SIF6. So lithium hexafluorosilicate dihydrate. It is a 1 to 2 mole ratio. All right, next. All right, what about percents? We've been doing a lot with percents. Percent uh, of uh, oxygen in a compound, for example, or 2 percents of elements in finding the empirical formula. Well, we can do the same thing with hydrates. We have 13.3 percent water, 86.7 percent uh, MOS, MO2S5, molybdenum 5 sulfide. Uh, my first step whenever I had percents is that I'm going to assume I have 100 grams of this stuff. That gives me 86.7 grams of the molybdenum compound and 13.3 grams of water. We are looking for MO2S5 dot how many water molecules by finding a mole ratio, 1 to whatever the water is. So I need to change this to moles. Uh, so in order for me to change that to moles, I have to uh, find the molar mass of molybdenum 2 sulfide. So I have two MOs. I'm going to go up high here. So 2 times the mass of MO, 5 times the mass of S. Um, molybdenum is 95.94. So 2 times 95.94, 5 times 32.1. 2 times 95.94, I get 191.88, let's go 191.9, uh, 32.1 times 5, I get 160.5, again rounding a bit, add them up, and I get 352.4, so 352.4 is the molar mass of uh, the molybdenum compound, 18 for water, so I am going to divide those grams by moles, or by their molar mass to get moles. So 86.7 divided by 352.4, and I have moles of the first compound. 13.3 uh, divided by 18, 0.738888888, we'll say 9. So now the ratio. Ratio is going to be divided by the smaller one, which is the first substance. And it's always going to be the first substance in a hydrate. Divided by 0.246, and it comes out to be a 3. Again, at this point right here, I have to think. This has to be a whole number, because I need to put a whole number right here in front of the water molecule. Uh, and if it does not, then something happens. Something's wrong along the way. Either the problem was written wrong, or you perhaps your molar masses were wrong. This is the most... A uh, common mistake right here is your molar mass. Uh, so if it doesn't work out, check that first. Um, but it did come out to be a whole number three, so I know I'm right. Uh, and then, like I said, the name would be, this is molybdenum 5 sulfide trihydrate uh, for the name. How about one more? Uh, a particular hydrate contains 89% barium bromide. Find the formula. All right, you're only given one number this time, but they tell you that it's a hydrate and you have barium bromide. So my first step would be, since I have a percent, assume 100 grams. That's 89.2 grams of barium bromide. Well, if, since it's a hydrate, it has water in it. Well, how much water would be the 100 minus 89.2? Um, and then that would be our grams of water. So our grams of water is going to be 10.8. All right, so now we have grams, find moles, find the ratio. We're trying to find the ratio of moles between barium bromide and water. 
Um, so we need a molar mass again. So barium uh, is 137.3. We'll just leave it at 137. Bromine is 79.9 uh, times 2. Let's just say 160, close enough. We'll see how our masses work out just doing that quickly like that. Or I'm sorry, our ratio. All right, uh, water is 18. Let me get rid of that molar mass again. Give myself, give myself some space. Uh, I have 89.2 divided by 89.2 divided by 297.3003. Again, keeping, keeping an extra significant digit, 10.8. Divided by 18, I get 0 0.600. You can see that one right away. We're going to divide by the smaller one, which is this one, and that gives us a 1, that gives us a 2. Um, and so the formula for our hydrate is going to be a 1 to 2 ratio. So this is barium bromide dihydrate. Barium bromide dihydrate. Uh, let me show you this one then before I quit, and that would be, this one's basically the same. You see we have 51.14% water, so assume 100 grams. This time we would subtract to get the grams of the MgSO4, um, and if you can probably figure that one out from the last one. But let me do this percent. So this is basically the opposite of what we just did. Uh, we were given in this problem a percentage and asked to find the formula. Well, now you're given the formula and asked to find the percent. Uh, as we've done all along, Percent is equal to part over the whole times 100. Go back and check it out if you don't remember. So what that means is since we're trying to find the percent of water, that would be the part of water. So we have 10 water molecules in this. So we need to find the mass of 10 water molecules for the part. Then to do the rest of it, I have to find the mass of the Na2CO3. And then the whole thing is going to be the mass of both of those added together. So I need... 10 waters. Water is 18, so 10 times 18 is 180. So again, 180 because I have 18 for water, and I have 10 of them, so 180. Uh, Na2CO3, we have two sodiums, so 46, 12, and 48. Add them up, 10, 16, carry the 1, 8, 9, so we have 106. So this is 106. That's 180. So the part over the whole for the percent of water, the part is going to be 180 because that's the mass of water over the whole thing. So 180 plus 106 gives us 286 and then times 100. So 180 divided by 286 times 100 and I get 62.9 percent water. So this hydrate is 62.9 percent water. So there it is, there's hydrates. Good luck.